Hello everyone and welcome back to Roscale Sandbox. Today it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be going through five tips in Roscale Sandbox. So it's going to be like a little introduction into the game and basically kind of a behind the scenes of how I do what I do. Uh, but don't worry, there will be more series episodes over the coming week. Um, so look forward to that. But yeah, let's get into it. So, the first tip I have for you guys is the curved rail tool. This is a lifesaver for building track on this game, um, and it's pretty new as well. A lot of people ask questions about this, so I'm just going to run through how to use it. So you go into quick build here, click on the green button, you get to the point, your first point, then you connect it to your second point, hold control, and turn your scroll wheel up. And as you can see, the more you turn your scroll wheel, the more detailed it becomes, the more parts it uses. Be aware, like, you don't want loads because it does have an effect on your, your save size. So I would say for this, and it depends, like, if you're having a bigger curve, I'd recommend um, less parts, but if it's really small and you want it to be detailed, I'd have more parts. So as you can see, when I do that, close quick build, curve, and you can do this with all sorts of things. You can do it with switches, any any rail you can do this on and it's like it's just a really good method to create smooth rail so moving on from that i'm just going to go into here you'll see you have your track sections here you have all the tracks something that's not very intuitive about this game is that a lot of the tracks you might actually want to create a realistic layout are actually in the decoration section and the rail section. Um, when I first started playing, I didn't know, th know this. And I think it's quite a, you have to spend quite, quite a while figuring this one out. But as you can see, there's two pages of, these are a lot more detailed and a lot smoother than the original ones you have here. So if I compare um, a regular switch, so this is the one in the base game. As you can see, it's really small. Um, it doesn't look bad, but comparing it to the ones from the rail section, it's just like unparalleled the amount of detail you get because they're longer and the switches are more detailed and they're just overall more realistic. Uh, but now I'm going to move on to the next step. So moving forward, I'm just going to briefly talk about the terrain tool here. Um, this is also a bit of a difficult one to figure out um, and also I'll go over the build tool as well which isn't too hard to figure out but if you're new then it might be a bit difficult so I'm firstly gonna go into decoration go to the blocky kit page and displacement is what you want for the terrain tool so place that see it generates a bit of grass and then see as you can see you can't really use the terrain tool on any of this but if you have a displacement part, you can displace the part and then hold shift. And you can increase and decrease the height of the terrain. And you can, once you've done this, you can also in the terrain tool, you can rescale it however you want. Useful tool for, I don't use it a lot in my in my maps, but if, if you want to use it, then it's there. But also this is how you get into the build tool. So I normally, get my part from here and once you have a part then you don't really need to use this at all unless you're building track so the main tools in the, the build tool are the scale tool um, this is just rescales your part pretty self-explanatory same with the move tool here um, and the rotate tool is pretty much the same here your increment is how much like the increment so if I put it to one, you can see the rotation is much smoother. I have much more control, but you want to keep it at even numbers and keep them the same throughout your map. So everything links together. Um, I normally use with a part, if I'm using the move tool, um, I'll use a, a increment on the move tool as 0.125. And if I need a bit more extra detail, I'll just half that, half that. Um, so it all lines up eventually. We have the material tool. So this changes the material of your part. Pretty self-explanatory as well. 
color is the same thing. Um, changes the color of your part. Um, and you can also, with this, grab another color part by clicking on it. See, set color, it's the same color again. And you also have this bit here, which is you can go to your recently used colors. And there's also decal tool. If you have the game pass, um, you can get go onto the Roblox website, um, paste your decal ID and choose your transparency and it will apply it to the part, the side of the part that you clicked. And we've got the light tool, which is, which creates a light on the part, as you can see, and you can choose where it is. I'm not really going to go into that, um, but that's also a useful one. It's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't really need to talk about that one. Settings. So this is if you want, firstly, cast shadow. It will make it not cast a shadow anymore, as you can see shadow is gone. Um, mesh ID, if you go on the Roblox website and get your mesh, put your ID in here and it'll co come up if you have the game pass. Uh, can collide, is it just, can it collide with you? The, as you can see, now that can collide's false, I can walk right through, walk right through it. Uh, and then shape, I can change it to cylinders. This is really helpful in building um, to get some different parts, get a lot more detail. So you have all of those. And the collision group, if you want it to collide with the trains, and the rail is just like, that's how it works. Duplicate tool, same thing. Um, group, if you have two parts and you want them to be grouped together. Now they're grouped and now you can move them together. Useful if you've built like an object, like a bench or a bin and you want to use it repeatedly or a tree, um, it's really helpful. Um, also delete tool, uh, delete as you can see. Uh, but there's also the text tool as well, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just text, what you want. But it's difficult with this because a lot of it um, just straight up is get censored. So I try and use decals, upload your decals of your text yourself. It's way better than the text tool. So that's about it for the terrain and the build tool. Um, I'm going to move on to some track detail now. So with track detailing um, is the colors of the track. I have to change the track colors and the ballast colors. So as you can see, if I go into the color tool now, um, I change it. it. Only changes the ballast and not the rails, but you can change the texture and all. But So how you change the actual color of the rails and the sleepers, going into color tool, banking out, um, and then you change the color change the channel to channel 2. Channel 2 should be your rails if I'm right. So you can change the color of the rails. So if I just go bright yellow here, the rails are that color. And you can, it's the same if you keep it with channel 2 and change the material. If I change the color, see, you can see that it's now changed to wood planks. Um, don't really want that re realistically, but, um, and then it's the same for if you want to change the rail color. No, the um, sleeper color, I mean. Um, so, say if I want that, change the color, change the, and it's changed the, the material as well. Um, one more thing. If you use parts under the rail with the ballast, um, it just creates a bit more realistic of effect. So, if I get the all there, so as you can see, it just creates a bit more. Um, ballast and it's definitely useful for double track makes it a lot more, look a, more, a lot more realistic than if I just had nothing in between looks a lot better and a lot yeah a lot more realistic so the last tip I'll actually give is just to join the discord um, there's a lot of community built packs on there that you can load up in your in your layout and they'll help spruce up your layout, detail up your layout. Um, they're really great. If you're not too good at building, um, you can just use the packs. Um, it's a really great resource to have and the Discord is also a really good place to interact with people who are also interested in the Roskill Sandbox community. I'll leave a link in the description for it. So that's about it for the five tips. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's a bit different to what I usually post. Well, videos but you know what I mean
I'm planning to do another series video next week, so you can look forward to that. And I hope you enjoyed. Do all the regular stuff. Subscribe, leave a comment if you if you wish. And yeah, goodbye.